Star Wars Issue 7 finds the Rebel leadership get ready to respond to the 7th Division's transmissions, despite what 3PO says about the Imperials locating them if they do. Leia knows they will respond, and they will strike back at the Imperials, who meanwhile track the Rebel transmissions aboard the Tarkin's will. Commander Zara and her men immediately set course for the Rebels, since Leia is in command of the 4th Division. Lieutenant Gore, however, wants to go after the 7th Division, since it's closer and would be more efficient. Zara agrees ordering all crews to battle stations as her men in the stations below her talk about the commander and how she didn't seem very happy with the change, wondering what the difference is since they are all rebels after all. One officer says that the 4th division is Leia Organa's and for the commander, the princess is a prize, having heard rumours that it could have something to do with Leia stealing the Death Star plans and having connections to the Imperial traitor Galen Erso. Because of that, targeting Leia is personal for Commander Zara. Zara remembers how years before in Iriadu, she along with two other recruits are taken by Governor Tarkin, who says he only needs one protege, revealing he chose them because they have no family or distracting entanglements, as well as they all scored very highly on the selection exams. He tells them his new exam will test their worth, showing them the Carrion Plateau, which he named his flagship the Carrion Spike after. He says his family have owned the land for generations, and on it lives a rare albino Veermok, which has risen to become an apex predator. Boarding his ship, he tells the recruits to hunt the creature and bring its head to him in 12 hours. Hours go by and soon the deadline arrives, but only the injured Zara returns with the Veermok's head. She tells Tarkin her colleagues were all unworthy, having seen Tarkin actually sent the officers not just to hunt the creature, but to hunt each other as well. Zara becomes Tarkin's protege, accompanying him on meetings with Director Krennic about Project Stardust, as well as interrogating prisoners for him. Soon Tarkin introduces her to Darth Vader, who has heard the woman spoken of very highly. Over the years, Zara gains great distinguishments, leading to Tarkin giving her a special mission. Tarkin details how on a mid-rim world called Ikruk, a warlord named Berinium Rowe operates, and Tarkin would like his officers to take him out. He gifts her the carrion spike to use in the strike, but Zara wonders why they would need such firepower, since they could just do this quietly with an assassination squad. Tarkin, however, says that Roe is utilising rhetoric and imagery from the old criminal ring known as the Nihil, which at one point wreaked havoc across the entire galaxy during the High Republic. Zara knows that chaos goes against everything the Empire stands for, so a message must be sent. Tarkin tells her to bring him Rose Head, so the commander heads to Ikruk, sending out probe droids, which Zara tells her officers that when arrayed properly, they can be extremely effective surveillance networks. The commander says that being mobile, the droids can follow a quarry and they never turn traitor. She reveals that she came up with this tactic since she's always considering her resources as broadly as possible, using her water as an example example, saying that she can drink it, use it as a sterilizing agent, or it can be frozen and used as a weapon, and can be even used to drown someone. She knows everything is a resource as the probe picks up something, finding Ro leaving a social club. They use the droids to follow the criminal back to his hideout, where Zara orders the cloaking of the carrion spike to be turned off. Above Ro's base, the carrion spike appears, blasting the base and Ro to dust. The probes don't detect any sign of life, so Zara calls it a successful mission, heading back to the Death Star, where she reports that Burnium Row has been neutralised. Tarkin, however, asks where the criminal's head is, since he asked for her to bring it to him. Zara thought that that was just a figure of speech, assuring Tarkin that the mission was a success. Tarkin isn't so sure, since he shows her a hologram of a very much alive Burnium Row, giving a speech about how even the Empire cannot kill him. Tarkin says that Zara Zara killed one of his decoys, and now the criminal is using the mistake to elevate himself across the shadow feed and embarrass the Empire. Tarkin says that she failed, thinking he knew who the commander was, but he finds himself mistaken. A week later, Zara tries to get into Tarkin's office with some new intelligence, but the officer at the door refuses to let her enter, saying that she has been reassigned. Zara accepts her punishment, telling the officer to let Tarkin know she understands before she heads to the hangar, demanding to be given a shuttle. The commander tells her he can't do that since 
all the shuttles are under lockdown, thanks to the Death Star being attacked by the Rebellion. Zara knows that the Death Star is fine against a few small one-man fighters, but the trooper says regardless of that, all shuttles are on hold in case of evacuation of high-ranking officers. With that, she knocks out the trooper, taking the shuttle and blasting off, sending out a message to Tarkin and apologising for her familiarity with him, since her relationship with him means much to her. She reveals that she plans on going back to finish her mission on Ikruk and gain the head of Berinium Row. Suddenly, the entire Death Star explodes, throwing the shuttle into deep space. In the present, Lieutenant Gore tells Zara that the 7th Fleet Division will soon be overwhelmed since they don't have the numbers. Zara is very well aware of that, wanting to know what happened to the 4th Division. Gore says that their secondary strike team arrived at the 4th Division's location, but the Rebels were already gone. Zara is angered since she knew this would happen as an officer reports additional Rebel ships dropping from hyperspace behind them. The 4th Rebel Division arrives as Gore knows that they are now caught in a pincer maneuver, but Zara isn't worried, ordering her shuttle to be prepped since she will be leading the boarding party to kill Princess Leia. Star Wars Issue 7 was a great Imperial-centric issue that gave us some cool backstory on Tarkin's protege Commander Zara and why she has a score to settle with the Rebellion and specifically Leia Organa. Again, Charles Soule does a really great job of introducing these new characters that you can instantly like, including villains. I really enjoyed how Zara's story was laid out and I like how that she's not really this perfect Imperial officer that she leads many to believe she is. She's very resourceful, I'll give her that, but she is quite arrogant in that way and she's all just doing it just to impress Tarkin and win his approval. Setting her up as a nemesis for Leia is great and reminds me of Kieran Gillen's run where Leia went up against Queen Trios. That was a really great rivalry so hopefully this one will be exactly like that and I enjoy that we're getting giant space battles here and can't wait till next issue. I'm going to give this issue an 8.5 out of 10.